Hi class, today we're going to be completing lesson 11.6, Understanding Volume. Uh, your objective today is by the end of the lesson, I will be able to count unit cubes to fill a solid figure to find volume. Please use the four L's in your scholar voices to share today's objective. Your warm-up question, Bruce builds the solid figure below using unit cubes. How many unit cubes does he use? Remember, all that you need to do is simply count the unit cubes. If you said that Bruce uses eight unit cubes, you are absolutely correct. Great job and way to remember what we learned last time. Our academic vocabulary today is cubic unit. So the volume of a shape is measured in cubic units, sometimes abbreviated as CU and then whatever type of unit. So feet, inches, whatever meters, centimeters, all of those. Volume is the amount of space that a solid figure occupies. So you have a volume, I have a volume, um, a can of soda has volume, a picture frame has volume, anything that takes up space has volume. So today we're going to learn how to measure volume using the formula length times width times height. Length is how long a figure is, width is how wide, and then height, of course, is how tall. So we just multiply those three measurements to get the volume. So how to solve. So first of all, we can find the volume of a rectangular prism by counting the unit cubes. Volume is the measure of the amount of space a solid figure occupies, and it is measured in cubic units. So one strategy is to count the cubic units. So if I wanted to find the volume, I would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I would say that this prism is made up of eight cubic units and has a volume of eight cubic units. That's one way. However, sometimes figures will have a lot of cubes in them or a lot of units, and it's really, really difficult to count those accurately. So I strongly recommend learning that formula length times width times height. For example, here, do you really want to spend about, I don't know, five minutes trying to count those out and then wondering if you're accurate? Or would you rather make sure you're accurate by taking the time to identify the length? So how long is this? So it is one, two, three cubic centimeters long. How wide is it? What's the width? So that's our second step. One, two, three, four, five, six. And how high is it? What's its height? And that would be two. So now to find the volume, we would multiply three times six times two. And the way that I want you guys to multiply is multiply two numbers at a time. So three times six times two is what we're solving. Multiply two at a time. So three times six is 18. And then 18 times two is 36. So 36 cubic units or 36 units. And then that three as the exponent tells us it's cubed. Let's try one together. So our first step is to identify the length. The length of this figure here is three. It's three inches long. The width, or how wide it is, it's two inches long. And the height is four, four inches long. So the first thing that we would do is we would write out our little formula. So length times width times height. And I always encourage you guys, rather than trying to solve a larger problem, just break it down and solve two at a time. It takes no time at all. So three times two is six, and six times four is 24. So it didn't take me very long to break it down. And you can see my work there. Three times two times four, three times two is six, six times four is 24. So our volume is 24 cubic inches because here it's showing us our measurement is being um, measured in inches. So we are going to do another one together. Remember, you could simply count the units, but I really recommend using length times width times height. So first to see the length, we see that the length is six. That's how long it is. The width is two and the height is three. So I'm going to pull up what I did here. So length was six, width was two, and height was three. 
and multiplying those together. Now I broke it down and I solved six times two first and got 12. Then I multiplied 12 by three and I got 36. So the measure here would be 36 cubic feet. The measure they're using is feet. Now I'd like for you to try this one on your own. Please pause here and try it on your own. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the problem and to, to see if you were correct. So you should have identified the length as five. You should have identified the width as four and you should have identified the height as three. Then you should have written out five, which is the length, four, which is the width, and three, which is the height. So length times width times height. I broke it down, five times four is 20, and 20 times three was 60. So you should have gotten 60 cubic inches. And we look at that inches, that's where I got inches, is that's what it's being measured in. And that would be all there is to volume. Now I'd like for you to do this one on your own. Please pause here. We are comparing the volume of each of these figures. And so to compare volume, we first have to find volume. So to find the volume of this first figure, we have to identify length, width, and height. So here we would have gotten eight length times two times two. And so I broke that down, eight times two is 16, and 16 times two is 32 inches cubed, or cubed inches. Now over here, we look at the length, which is four, the width, which is four, and the height, which is two. So four times four times two. I broke it down and solved four times four, which is 16. And then I multiplied 16 by that two. So then I got 16 times two is 32 inches cubed. And I forgot my inches there, but you should probably should remember not to forget to add that. So we had 32 cubic inches here and 32 cubic inches there. If we're comparing, we know that 32 equals 32. And that's all that you would do when you're comparing. Here we are on the next one. And so if you are still struggling, I'll walk you through it. Otherwise, pause here and try to solve it on your own. So we know that volume is length times width times height. So the length they've given us is nine. The width was four and the height was three. I just went ahead and broke it down. So nine times four is 36. And then I multiplied that 36 by three and got 108 feet cubed or cubic feet. Now here we do the same thing. Length, which is eight times width, which is five times height, which is two. So I wrote that out length times width times height. Eight times five is 40. And then of course I can't forget that two. So 40 times two is 80 feet cubed. So here we're comparing 108 cubic feet to 80 cubic feet. Of course the 108 is larger so our symbol should be pointing at 108. We're going to go ahead and do this one um, together and these are a little bit confusing but that's okay. We'll be focusing on volume for a few days and so I want you to take a deep breath and remember they're just words. We take it one sentence at a time. So Gerardo says a cube with edges that measure 10 centimeters. And I'm going to go ahead and underline cube because I think it's important to know what type of polyhedron it is. Has a volume that is twice as much as a cube with sides that measure five centimeters. Now, the faces of a cube are squares. And we have learned that squares have sides that are all equal. Okay, so if we're finding a, the volume of a cube that has 10 centimeters on each of its edges, that means 10 times 10 times 10. So we, let's go ahead and solve for the 10 centimeter one. So 10 times 10 times 10. So 10 times 10 equals 100, and 100 times 10 equals 1,000. And excuse my handwriting here, and they said they're measuring in centimeters. So we'd say 1,000 centimeters. The other cube has five centimeters for its edges. 
So pretend this is a cube. Mrs. Nugent's not super great with this drawing tool. So it's five, five, and five. So length with, length, width, and height would be five. So let's do five times five times five. And five times five is 25. 25 times five is 125. So Gerardo is saying that it's this number is twice as much as this number. Is that correct or incorrect? Well, let's think about it. 125 times two would give us, so that's just like saying you have a dollar and 25 cents. If you had that twice, you would have 250. So is 250 half of a thousand? Is a thousand two times 125? I don't think so. So your explanation would look something like this. A cube with the edges that measure 10 centimeters has a volume of a thousand. The cube with edges that measure five have a volume of 125. 120, uh, sorry, a thousand is far greater than 125. Two times 125 would be 250, not a thousand. So Gerardo was very incorrect. Now we're going to go ahead and do this one together. If you click down here, there's a video to your math on the spot. And I would like for you to watch it, please. But some of you will probably not watch it. Let's be realistic. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through this one as well. So Pia built a rectangular prism with cubes. You see cubes again. The base of her prism has 12 one centimeter cubes. The prism was built with 108 centimeter cubes. What is the height of her prism? So this is very confusing. So what I would recommend is draw out her 12 one centimeter cubes. So the base has 12 one centimeter cubes. And for me, it's gonna be just kind of faster to blah, probably not draw it like that. But long story short, there's 12 cubes on the bottom. And sorry, I can't really draw it very well. And she's used a total of 108. So the total prism has 108. And we know that she has used 12 one centimeter cubes in each of the um in the base of it. So 108 divided by 12 would be nine. And so that is how we find out how her rectangles were arranged. So if you did nine um, layers of 12 cubes, so there's 12 down here, 12, 12, 12. And that was the case that she stacked the cubes nine times, that would equal 108. So 12 times nine is 108. I know that one's a little confusing. And again, if you're struggling with volume, please don't freak out. Um, let's move on to number nine. A packaging company makes boxes with edges each measuring three feet. It's important. The volume, what is the volume of the boxes? So if it's a cube, so think of a box, it's usually a cube like this. Um, so they're saying the length is three, the width is three, and the height is three. So to find volume, we do length times width times height. So three times three times three. So we would multiply first two numbers at a time, which is nine. So nine times this three over here and that equals 27, just like that. So it says if, so what is the volume of the boxes? So that would be 27 feet cubed or cubic feet. So that's the volume of the boxes. We've answered this question so far. If 10 boxes are put in a larger rectangular shipping container and completely fill it with no gaps or no overlaps, what is the volume of the shipping container? So this needs to be multiplied by 10 times because they had 10 boxes. So 27 times 10 
is equal to 270. So here you can see a neater explanation. So the volume of the box would be three times three times three, which is 27 cubic feet. If 10 boxes are put into a rectangular box, the volume would be 27 times 10. And that gives us 270 cubic feet because there were 27 boxes and, sorry, there are 10 boxes and each of those boxes has a volume of 27. So we just multiplied. Now I'd like for you to go ahead and solve the vol for the volume of this. Remember volume is length times width times height. You should have gotten 60 cubic centimeters. And I really want you to rate yourself honestly. And if you're struggling, please log on to office hours because I cannot read your mind and it's really, really hard for me to know if you understand or don't because I can't see you. So please, please, please reach out if you have questions. Don't be embarrassed, that's what I'm here for. And then your practice today is 11.6 PMT. Show that you understand volume. And just so you know, the PMTs are being entered into your distance learning gradebook. So you can take a look at that to see how you're doing with the distance learning opportunities as of last Monday. Anyway, have a great day and thanks for watching.